design test review. Let's do a few problems together. Um, we're going to start here. It says identify the features of the graph based on the equation. So we're going to put this into standard form. Um, I start with the highest exponent, which here is 9x to the third. Then I have negative 7x squared. That's the next highest. Minus 6x. And then finish with plus 13. The degree is the highest exponent, which here is 3. And we call a polynomial of degree 3 cubic. Because I have degree 3, that means this graph has three roots, either real or imaginary, and the maximum number of terms that this graph can have is one less than the degree. If you don't know about the end behavior of the graph, go ahead and graph it. You get to use your graphing calculator in this unit. So I have 9x to the third minus 7x squared. Let's see, I lost it. Minus 6x plus 13. All right, here's my graph. I can look on the left, my arrow is going down towards negative infinity, and on the right, the arrow is going up to positive infinity. So that will be the end behavior. It looks kind of like this. That was our graph. All right, next one here, number four. We're in factor form. We're talking about degrees and multiplicities and sketching graphs. So to find the degree when you're in factored form, it's not the highest exponent, you add up the exponent. So I have a 3 and a 2, which is a degree of 5. We call degree 5 polynomial quintic. If I have degree 5, I have 5 total roots. The leading term here, there's a number, but that number is positive. All right, now, if I have degree 5, that means that I'm going to have maximum of 4 terms. And let's talk about what our end behavior will look like. We can look at the graph on our calculator. Let's make sure we understand a little bit without our calculator. I have a degree 5, which is odd, which means that my graph has two arrows in opposite directions. Positive leading coefficient means you start low and end higher and have a positive trend. So you'll start low on the left at negative infinity, and your graph will go up forever to positive infinity. Let's do domain and range once we see the picture. Um, my roots here, that 0.5, be careful, that is not a root. Not a root. There's no x, so it's not a, an x-intercept. It's just, that's like your vertical stretch or compression. That's one half, so the graph is a little bit shorter. All right, but it's not a root. The first root is at positive 7 here. Its multiplicity is 3, which means you're going to cross, it's odd. And what's cubic? Because cubic polynomials have degree 3. The other root is at negative 2. Its multiplicity is 2, which means it's going to touch the x-axis and look quadratic. When you start by labeling your roots, if I have a root at 7 and a root at negative 2, I'm going to label those. I know I start low. At negative 2, I'm touching and bouncing off the axis. I'm going to come down and bounce off. At 7, I'm going to come through the axis but flatten out when I get there and go back up to the top. My arrows are in opposite directions there. If you're not sure if you did it right, we'll come back to domain and range. Let's look at our picture on Desmos then. All right, so my picture was 0.5, parentheses, x minus 7 cubed, and then x plus 2 squared. That is kind of what my graph looks like. It's hard to see, but you do bounce off the axis over here, and you flatten out at 4. Now, I do have the right shape, so let's do domain and range. Domain is left to right. On the left here, my arrow is going forever to the left, so it's negative infinity, and my arrow on the right is going forever to the right to positive infinity. The range is going down forever to negative infinity, up forever to positive infinity. All right, number five, same kind of thing. A little less work, but you don't even have to sketch the graph. Given factor form, now the degree, we have a 2, a 1, and a 1. So those add up to 4. We call a polynomial of degree 4, quartic. If I have degree 4, that means I have a total of 4 roots. This co leading coefficient is negative. There's a minus sign in front. Degree 4 polynomial will have a maximum of 3 terms. Now it's even degree, so your graph is going to go... Arrows in the same direction, and negative means arrows are both going to go down to negative infinity. If you're not sure about that, graph the picture and look at it. Um, my roots here. When I have the x 
squared. No matter whether there is a number in front or not, I know I have negative 0.25. That is not the root. The root is a 0, and its multiplicity is 2. That means it's going to touch the axis and look quadratic. The touching quadratic goes together. The next root is at positive 5. It has a multiplicity of 1. It's going to cross and look linear. And the last root is at negative 6. It has a multiplicity of 1 and also crosses and looks linear. Now, double check your root. I'm letting you use your calculator for this unit. We didn't necessarily do that during the year. So when you have this graph, make sure that you wrote the right thing in the boxes for all the roots. And this is the picture of the graph. I have my roots are negative 6, 0, and 5. That should be what's in your boxes. You can see the multiplicities, and you can see the end behavior is going down forever. All right, the next one here will be number 6. The leading coefficient here. Well, in order to find the leading coefficient when the arrows are in opposite direction, you connect the ends. That line has a negative trend, so we have a negative leading coefficient, which means when I write my factored form, I'm going to have a negative in front. Now, my factors here, root at negative 2 means I have a factor of x plus 2. Now, it bounces off the axis here, so it's going to have a multiplicity of 2. The next root is at 0, so I have an x. And it also bounces off the axis, so it also has a multiplicity of 2. And the last root's at 1, so my factor is x minus 1. You cut right through with a multiplicity of 1 there. The degree of that polynomial that 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, that's called quintic. And the end behavior, well, as x goes to negative infinity, on the left, my arrows go up to infinity. And on the right, the arrow is going down to negative infinity. The domain of this graph, left to right, there's arrows on both sides, so the domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. Same with the range. I'm low to high, both have arrows, negative infinity to infinity. All right, a couple more here. Let's see, we're going to do three, two more, three more. One of the, or, I'm sorry, two more, I guess. So let's go to polynomials. Those less than two. You need to write factored form first in order to get to standard form. And then, um, you know, we'll multiply to get standard form. So when I give you the function notation, that tells you that I have a root at negative 3, negative 1, and 5. Now when you write your factors, you take the opposite sign of those roots. That's called factored form. Now, in order to get rid of the parentheses for standard form, you need to multiply. So we're going to start by multiplying the right ones together. And the left one just stays as it is. So I'll multiply here. x times x is x squared. I'm going to do this in one step. Minus 5x plus 1x. So that'd be minus 4. Minus 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Minus 5. Now, to finish, to distribute, I distribute the x. x times x squared is x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x. And then the lastly, I multiply the 3. 3 times x squared is 3x squared minus 12x and minus 15. And you can go ahead and combine like terms. Um, I have an x cubed is all by itself. Minus 4x squared plus 3x squared is negative 1x squared. Negative 5x and negative 12x is minus 17x minus 15. This polynomial has degree 3 highest exponent, so we call it cubic. You can always graph your function factored form and your standard form in Desmos to check and see if your equations give you the right root. All right, one more. Multiple choice. It says, which of the following is not a solution? Now, another word for solution here is root. So if I know the root, there's two ways. I can either graph this on Desmos, or I can use my knowledge of how I built polynomials. This negative x to the fifth there, that means that there's a root or x-intercept of 0. This x minus 2 means there's a root at 2, a root at negative 2, and a root at 3. Now, let's see which one of the multiple choice doesn't belong. I have a 2, a 0, a 3, negative 5 is nowhere to be seen 
in those solutions. So negative 5 is not a root or solution of the question. All right, try the rest of the review. If you have questions, ask your teacher for help or check your answers on Canvas, and you'll be all set for the test.